Hey guys, so this week I'm going to be trying out a different video style where basically today I'm going to be trying to recreate some Mr. Who's the Boss editing assets in DaVinci Resolve. So the first one that I'm going to be recreating is just the font that they use in the video. I'm going to try and recreate it. Now if my voice sounds a little bit congested, it's because I'm actually sick at the moment. Anyways, let's start with the video. So the first step to recreate this is know what kind of font that is. What font does Mr. Who's the Boss use? Trade secret but I know exactly what font they use, and that is called Proxima Nova Extra Bold. All right, so if you look closely at this text, you may notice that there's a little bit of a gradient in it. To have a gradient in this type of text in DaVinci Resolve, instead of using the normal text layer, you're gonna have to use the text plus layer, which offers more features. I'm gonna have the reference up on the screen for you guys, just so you know what I'm trying to recreate. Proxima Nova, extra bold. Now you may notice that in the reference, the text is actually slanted a little bit. What you're gonna have to do is go into transform, shear, and then change the X value to this much, just like that. And then to create the gradients and the shadows, go over to the shading tab, change the blending to solid, and over here, select the type from solid to gradient, and then you can select the gradient of the text. So to recreate the outline, you're going to need to select the second element, enable that, select the type from solid to gradient, and I can already see by the reference that it's actually light at the top and darker at the bottom, so, and I'm also going to make it thicker too. And now you may notice that in the reference there's actually a shadow, so to add a shadow, select the third element, enable the shadow, and then fine tune it. And boom, I've pretty much recreated it. So to recreate the in animation, because most of them have in animations, I can tell just by this video here, it's got a sort of a pop-in effect, which means that basically it starts off small, gets bigger, and then just like... <laughs> so to recreate that, it's like the text, go into the fusion page, drag the transform node in there. All you have to do is just put a keyframe there, and put another keyframe there, and then I'm gonna just make it size zero. So now it just, it's gonna pop in like that, just like that, boom. Just like that. And obviously you gotta add that nice motion blur in there as well. So if you want to go into detail, you can actually change the spline of the animation just like this. If you want it to start slow and end fast, then you can just do that like that. But I'm gonna check the reference video. So it seems like it's starting fast then slowing down. To start fast then slow down, basically just need to boom. And then zoom in here. You may notice that when you drag this, it's gonna control that one. You don't want that. Just hold control while you're doing the thing, and then now it won't control the other one. And boom, that's how you do it. Alright, now this animation right here, it actually looks kind of challenging. You start off with a line, right? And then it, it sort of expands and then shows the elements like that, which actually looks like a very, very challenging animation to do. Now this part right here is actually the thing that I'm going to recreate first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a fusion composition. Now you may notice the fusion composition is completely black, but that's because there's literally nothing in the fusion composition. It's completely empty with nothing in it. So we're going to add stuff in it. So to recreate this, first I'm going to add a background node. So I'm going to make it actually transparent. So now when we go back, the fusion composition is actually now transparent. That's going to be the first step to everything. And then next, I'm going to drag down another background node. As a baseline, if you're coming from another video editing platform, such as like After Effects, these background nodes are like literally exactly like solid layers. So you can just drag it down and use it as if it was a solid layer. I'm going to pick the, the color of the actual thing. And then I'm going to add a rectangle mask. It's this one right here. I'm just going to put it in the merge node and I'm going to try and match the shape. So it's pretty easy to match the shape. It's just this rectangle with the rounded corners. What I can do is I can just shrink the height and then you see this corner radius here. This is where all the magic happens. All you have to do here is just increase the corner radius a little bit. And now you have your baseline shape. So now I can see right here that there's also another color. So there's a multicolored rectangle right here. And it seems like I can just do this. I can just copy it. And then I can just make the background a different color. So I'm going to pick another screen color, just like that. 
And then I'm gonna add an instance node. So what an instance node is, is basically like a node that basically if you change anything here, it also changes in this node. It's pretty helpful if you wanna change a node, but you also wanna change an identical node at the same time. So I'm just gonna connect that there and now it should be like that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a polygon node and sort of just draw my shape like this. And then connect it to the background node and now it's like that now it's actually multicolored and now it's time to add the text so so earlier i said that the text plus layer actually has more features than the normal text layer and in fusion what's really nice about fusion is that if you want to add text it's, this is actually text plus as you can see right here so i'm going to drag it down and then i'm going to basically copy what it says here so first i'm going to copy the number seven part so just Hashtag seven and obviously you got to match the font. So Proxima Nova. Where is it? And then extra bold slide it over like that And I also got to add the little details here and there. So I'm gonna add the gradient pick the screen color And the top of that is the top of the text right here pick screen color and then, I, and then I'm gonna select the bottom of the text What I got to do now is just add a little bit of sheer to it just like this. All right, so I'm also gonna finish this other text here. So just, just copy and paste the text layer. I'm just gonna copy exactly what it says here. And then I'm gonna set the exact same colors. So you may be like, oh, but there's also a gradient right here. And that's why these don't look the same. Now I'm gonna try and recreate the gradient. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another background node. So this background node is actually before the text, which is why the text shows up on the top. So what I'm going to do with this background node is I'm basically going to match the uh, colors in here, but at the bottom of it. Pick screen color, and then select in the darker area. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag down a rectangle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a polygon instance node. So I'm going to paste an instance, and then I'm going to take this output and then plug it into the merge node. So now... So now this rectangle is only where uh, this instance polygon is. So now you may notice another thing. This is bleeding outside of the actual uh, graphic. You don't want that, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another merge node. And then I'm going to grab the output of the instance node. And then put it in there. Now the reason why this doesn't work is because this is actually set as the background. And the effect mask only works to crop out the uh, foreground. So what you're going to have to do is grab the... Grab the output that's plugged into here, and then change it to the foreground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import a background node, and then make it transparent. And now you can see that it's darker. So now we can play with this rectangle node. So I'm going to drag it so that the edge of the rectangle node is actually in the middle of the actual graphic. And then I'm going to turn up the soft edge like this. So now this fusion page is starting to look a little bit complicated. And that's a good thing. That means you're getting better. All right, so now next step is to recreate this uh, gradient right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this away a little bit. And then I'm going to add another background node. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the output of the instance rectangle. And I'm going to put that in the merge node just like there. And I'm going to match the background color. So pick screen color it's gonna just like that one and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna drag the output of this rectangle node and put it in this background node here so that this rectangle node actually affects both of these and I'm actually gonna drag this to the center and then extend it like that and now I have a gradient on both of the parts here all right so now that I've recreated the look now let's recreate the animations yay this is actually a very complicated animation, so first things first, you need to get this little piece here to extend, and then it just needs to extend horizontally like that, and then the text is supposed to show up like that, and then boom, you have your animation. And then if you wait a little bit, you may notice that the out animation is just a basic just falling down. That's just a pretty basic animation that anyone can do. It's the in animation that's the hardest. Analyze this frame by frame real quick. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this instance rectangle node and I'm going to make another instance and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a merge node and I'm going to plug this instance node into the merge node right here. Just drag the output of the merge right here to the green one and I'm going to add another background node and make it transparent and then in theory this should work on everything. So see that it works on everything. I'm going to put a keyframe on both width and height. And I'm going to go to uh, frame 13 and then make the width like this, just like that. 
And then I'm gonna go to frame zero, and then I'm gonna make the width a little bit wider, but it's also gonna be like, just like that. The in animation is like that, where basically it just comes in like that, and then it just expands horizontally. So the timing is pretty uh, accurate. It's just the spline of the animation is actually just different. This one's just like basic keyframes with no easy ease or anything like that, just basic keyframes. And actually that's what I'm gonna fix right now. So if you go up in here to spline, you can see you have all these confusing little things. And these are basically just checkboxes and then you can just check whatever you wanna animate. And since these animations right here is basically just ease in and out, the bar graph is just gonna look like sort of a sine wave. I'm just gonna make it look like that. And now, it's like an easy ease in and out, there's no like rough keyframes or anything. And to polish it even further, you gotta add that sweet motion blur, which I know everyone loves. Boom. And now I'm gonna animate the text. Judging by this video here, it looks like the animation for this piece of text right here ends at around where this sort of extends out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into Inspector, go into Text, go into the Text tab, and then go into Size, and then I'm just gonna shrink it to zero, and I'm going to change the center of the of the font just to be like that so now it opens like that now to animate this this piece of text here it seems like the animation sort of stops right around here I'm gonna go to the text tab size and then make the size zero again and I'm also gonna change the uh, position of the text I'm just gonna change it to like in here now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into spline, close the inspector. So I went into spline and then I unchecked everything but this node here. For this one I'm actually going to start it off fast and then slow it down over time because that's how it seems like it goes in the video. So if you've done your animation, after that you're just going to want to add that sweet motion blur. Now you have motion blur onto the text right here. Now if I inspect this uh, video right here you can see this gray part actually moves out into position. Like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this polygon layer, which is basically this area up here. And I'm just gonna change the center, so basically what I'm doing is I'm just changing the actual uh, position of the thing. And obviously I gotta add that motion blur. And now, as you can see, we're almost done with the motion graphics. So the next thing that you're gonna wanna do is you can see these ti this tiny detail underneath this right here. You can see it sort of makes the this whole thing look 3D. I'm gonna try and recreate that. So basically what you wanna do is you wanna copy this entire thing and then just paste it into like this because you want an exact replica of this to be as the shadow to create that 3D effect. And then connect the two with this merge node. This whole thing I've worked on first into the foreground input of the merge node. Then I have this whole thing and put it into the background input in the merge node. And this background input is what's going to make the 3D effect possible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a transform node and then I'm gonna drag it down a tiny bit. And now you can see it actually uh, sort of makes a difference in the bottom here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a color correction node and I'm gonna turn it down just like this. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is me notice in the original video, this element is actually going up and down very slowly. So just to do that is actually quite simple. All you need is a transform node and then you just gotta change this position every couple of frames. And then just add that sweet motion blur, add the out transition and then you can just select the transition, you can make it push down preset, and then ease in, and then add the motion blur, obviously. Move this into place, and then you're you're all done. And then you can just render it out. Obviously, since it's a very complicated composition, it's gonna take a while to render out, but once it's done, you'll have the finished product. So I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. I've literally been recording for literally more than an hour at this point, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you loved it, please subscribe, and I'm gonna see you guys in the next video. Bye!